Hi, this is Ted Blank, and this will be a short video on how to use the free Audacity software editing program to improve and learn your barbershop music. Um, I'm gonna, I've got Audacity 3.2 uh, installed and started. That'll be the version you download if you have uh, haven't installed it yet. Uh, I'll go through a couple of settings that I like to change when a new install is created. Um, they're under Edit Preferences, so we'll click on Edit Preferences here, and we'll take a look at the first three of these uh, preferences, uh, Devices, Playback, and Recording. Um, under Devices, you get to choose which devices are used for playback, output, and which are used for recording, and how many channels to record, whether it's mono or stereo. I always recommend you record in stereo for reasons you'll see later. Um, Recording, we're recording from the Logitech USB headset that I'm wearing. Um, and typically, I would have the output also go to the Logitech USB headset so I could hear uh, the uh, playback. But in this case, I'm going to send the output to the regular speaker so you can hear what's coming out of my speakers. Typically, you wouldn't do that when you were recording because then the uh, other three parts would bleed into the sound that you're providing into your microphone and you wouldn't get a pure recording of your own voice. So that's under devices. Under playback there's nothing really to look at here. Under recording there are three options that I recommend setting. Um, play other tracks while recording or overdub is very important because that's what you actually want to do here is listen to the other tracks of the other three parts while you sing your part. Um, software playthrough input I always leave unchecked because it's very difficult to um, get the sound to come out of the headset at the same instant that you sing it. There's always a delay and it gets very very confusing to hear your voice later after you've sung the various notes and words. So I leave that unchecked. Um, always check record on a new track otherwise your recording will end up appended to the learning track which we don't want. And I leave detect dropouts uh, checked although I don't quite know what it does. Those are the three that uh, I consider important. Oh. One more. If we go back to devices here for a moment, there's a there's an item down at the bottom called latency compensation. Um, each of you will have to decide the proper number for this. Um, what you'll find is that when you record a, tra a, a track, uh, your voice um, during playback will lag slightly behind the other three parts, even though when you sing it, you hear the other parts uh, at the same time you're singing it. So by uh, making this small adjustment, in this case it's uh, about an eighth of a second, you will, uh, you'll hear your voice played back and it will actually line up with the other three parts the way it did when you heard them in your headset when you sang the part. So this number might be as low as 60, as high as 200. You'll have to apply, find the right number that makes your playback sound exactly lined up with the, the uh, tracks that you were listening to when you recorded it. All right, now we'll import some music into Audacity and see what we've got on the screen. Um, we'll select File and then we'll select Import to import a single music file, uh, an audio file, from your uh, computer hard drive into Audacity. Um, we'll select Import and then Audio. And here you'll have to navigate to the directory in which you have stored all the uh, learning tracks for the particular song that you're interested in learning. So here we'll just pick the first one, How Lucky You Are, uh, the baritone part. Click Open and Audacity will import that file into uh, Audacity, display it on the screen with the two channels uh, displayed. The left channel is displayed on the top and that will always be uh, the uh, single part that you need to learn. And the bottom channel here will be the uh, right channel, and that'll be the other three parts, which the person recorded it has merged down into a single uh, channel. So left channel's on top, containing your part. Right channel's on the bottom, containing the other three parts. Um, a lot of times we call these the left track and the right track, but I'm going to use the term channel for the left and right uh, split of the stereo uh, music because we're going to use the word uh, track to reference a new recording that you might make as you try to uh, sing along and, and learn your part. 
So left channel, right channel, and uh, possibly a new track later on. To play back the music, uh, this particular song, all we have to do is uh, either click on this green uh, right pointing triangle or hit the space bar. And we'll, let's see what it sounds like. How lucky you are. Yeah. Days can be cloudy and you may be destroyed, but now you'll hear that uh, this is a part predominant recording, of course. So what you're hearing is mostly the left channel, the baritone channel. Uh, but we can change that. We can change that by sliding these sliders. If we slide this pan slider all the way to the left, you'll hear just the left channel, which is on top. And if you slide it all the way to the right, you'll hear just the lower, the right channel, which is the other three parts merged together. We center though. You can also change the volume of this particular track with the volume slider as well. So I'll click this little square box to stop the playback. You can also do use that. The space bar will also stop recording, uh, stop the playback as well. Um, now the first thing I'm going to do with uh, after loading a new song like this um, might be counterintuitive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split this track, the entire two-channel track, into two tracks. And we'll do that using this drop-down menu here where we say split stereo track. Now you'll notice that we now have um, uh, we now have a uh, a track for the original left channel, which is in stereo, and we have a track for the original right channel, which is in stereo, and the sliders are set to the way they were to begin with. So if we play what we've got now, it'll sound exactly the way it did before. Just click on play and see. So again, we heard a part predominant um, song, but um, this will give us some flexibility later on. Uh, in particular, it lets us use the mute and solo buttons. So if we slide this slider back um, to the middle and slide this slider back to the middle, we will now hear um, the baritone part out of both left and right channels or speakers, and we'll also hear the uh, the other three parts merge together out of both stereo speakers as well. So let's hear that. How lucky you are. Yeah. Days can be cloudy and you may be destroyed. You can't really hear that, but each of these is coming out of the same uh, out of both speakers. Uh, but now we can use the mute and solo buttons. So um, if we play this back and we want to hear just our part. We can mute the, um, the these two channels right here, and now we're getting the baritone part out of just out of both speakers, and we can swing it to the left or to the right, you know, depending on which ear you prefer to hear your part in when you're singing. And same thing here, we can we can mute this individual part. And do the same thing. Send the merged part left or right, depending again on which ear you want to hear that in when you're singing. And then the solo button is the opposite. You know, solo just mutes all the other parts, whichever, however many there are down here. Same thing here. Now I'd like to cover some of the uh, playback options before we get into recording our own voices. You can start uh, playback at any point by left clicking with the mouse uh, at that point in the waveform and then the playback will start at that point. For example, if I press the space bar right now, we'll start about halfway through the pitch. So uh, we can start anywhere. If we want to listen to this little part here. We can click here and that's where playback will start. So uh, you can also highlight a section of the song if you'd like to uh, just play that part back. You can uh, left click 
and then drag the mouse to highlight a subset of the song and then when you start playback you'll play only that part of the song. Now there's also a button where you can uh, loop that and listen to it as many times as you want to. So if you select, click on the loop button, turn looping on, then when you do playback, it'll play back that section as many times as you can stand. So you get the idea there. Now you, you eliminate this uh, highlight by just left clicking once anywhere in the waveform, like back here and that'll set a new start point without a selection, just a start point by itself. One thing that a lot of folks like to do is to slow down the playback of one of the learning tracks without changing the pitch. So uh, Audacity has the ability to do that. Um, there's an effect called, uh, there are two effects, one's called the change pitch, change speed, and change tempo. The one we want to use is called change tempo. Um, but before we use it we have to select the part of the song that we want to change the tempo for. We'll use control A to select the entire song and now we will apply this uh, change tempo and you'll notice it says change tempo without changing pitch. So we could slow it down by uh, 25 percent say uh, and a little preview here So that's 25% slower than it would be, and uh, you can then uh, you know listen to the song and uh, and learn your part that way uh, with it play back a little slower. Oh, I'll cancel this at the moment, and we'll move on to how to uh, record your own voice. So let's move on to recording our own voice. Um, when we do that, of course, we want to mute the part that has our part on it, the track that has our part on it. So we'll mute the baritone track. Oh, if I hadn't pointed this out already, um, I've changed the names of these tracks here with the drop-down name so that we can keep track of which is which. So this one is the baritone track, and then this one I've called the harmony track with the other three parts on it. So in order to uh, record our own voice, we'll want to mute the part, the track that has our part on it and we should now be able to sing along with the uh, the other three parts. So I'll sing a few bars of that. I've uh, set the pan uh, to the center so that this comes out of both speakers. Uh, normally this would come out of uh, my headset. Uh, normally the to record your, your uh, uh, playback device you would want to be the uh, Logitech headset so that you didn't hear your own uh, the, the speakers in, in the part that you are recording, but uh, for this demonstration I'm allowing the sound to come out of the speakers so that you can hear that in the background. Um, so here we go. Days can be cloudy and you may be distraught, but look at what you've got, at what you've got, yeah you've got a lot! Now there's a, I guess it's kind of a bug or a feature in Audacity that when you record a track it comes up muted. Um, we'll, uh, we can fix that. Just click the mute button once and click it again and it'll unmute the track. And I don't believe that happens on subsequent recordings. Um, so uh, let's see, I'll, I'll uh, play this back. I'll turn the volume of this track down a little bit just because uh, I think I had the gain up a little too high on the microphone. So uh, we'll click the space bar to start this playback and see how that sounds. Well, that didn't sound too bad to me, but Again, it's hard, to, it's hard to hear that when the, uh, the other tracks are playing, so you can listen to your own part alone if you want by just muting this track as well. Click playback, we'll hear it all completely open. So there's my voice alone. But to compare that with the learning track, it's also possible to unmute the baritone track now that we've got a recording. 
And if we play these two, this should sound like nothing but a single voice without any dis distract without any um, differences between the two tracks. Then I've learned my part well, and and uh, I'm singing it as best I can. I'm not really warmed up tonight, so uh, let's hear how this sounds compared with uh, played together with the the uh, actual learning track. I'll play that again. I'll raise up the volume a little bit on the learning track. So uh, this is how you can record your own uh, voice. Um, you can, of course, also start recording again on another track by starting uh, you can like pick a spot maybe here uh, start your uh, recording here and then you can do what punch in recording um, which is where you start recording at the end of the already recorded track so let's, let's do that we'll just uh, try this again you'll see a new track appear down here in the bottom in fact let me do this I'm gonna shrink this track a little bit in size so we'll be able to see the new track when it appears down here When the news is all bad, when you're sour and blue, when you start to get mad, you should do what I do. There we go. So now we have uh, we have uh, one recording here, another recording here. You can you can do this all day if you want to. Um, just an, uh, another way to uh, practice and learn learn your part. Now let's say you want to export your recording as an mp3 file uh, to send to uh, a friend who might uh, be singing the same part and is willing to listen to your uh, recording and give you some feedback. Uh, so the way to do that is as follows. What we want to do is mute the uh, learning track baritone part, unmute the learning track harmony parts, and um, understand that the this track here uh, that contains the harmony parts has the ability to be panned either left or right. It originally came on the right track so in our exported track containing our voice we want the harmony part to get back on the right track so we'll just slide the slider over to the right. That'll force this harmony part to come out only on the right uh, channel of the, of the final track. And we'll do the same, do the opposite on our voice we'll slide the slider all the way to the left so that only the left channel of this uh, track will be added to the left channel of the output track. Um, once we've done those two things and of course we might want to fiddle a little bit with uh, the gain on each of these um, tracks to uh, make sure that our voice is predominant but not overly loud, um, we can use this uh, file export option. Oh, you can hear my dog in the background chewing on her squeaky toy. So click on File, Export as MP3. And uh, what we want to do here is uh, we can put it in the same directory as all the other songs, but we certainly don't want to use the same name because then we'll overwrite our learning track. So let's give this a new name. We'll call this uh, Ted um, Lucky Berry uh, 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 1 and click Save. An option, uh, metadata tag option comes up. Click OK. And we are exporting this audio with standard preset. So that is now uh, a two-channel two track with the, uh, hopefully, with the harmony parts on the right side and my voice on the left. So let's uh, open a new Audacity window, File New, and let's import the MP3 file that we just created just as a test. Should be down here at the bottom starting with Ted. There it is, Ted Lucky Berry 1. Open that file. And sure enough, we have a single track with two channels, left channel and right channel. Left channel contains my voice because we had that pan set all the way to the left. The right channel contains the other three parts all the way to the end. If you had sung the whole song, there'd be a waveform all the way along here. 
Uh, let's hear how this sounds. Do a playback on this. How lucky you are. Yeah. Now that only comes out the left, cha the right channel. So there we are, and the person listening to your track can play with the pan again. They can slide this over to the left a little bit and get a um, little bit more focus on your voice. Or they can listen to you completely, 100%. So that's how you record your voice and export your voice to a new mp3 file for someone to review for you. Hope this was helpful.